So hi, hello, welcome to my June vlog. This will probably be yet another month long reading vlog, mostly on account of I'm lazy and don't vlog as much as I used to. So I'd rather have like one very long month long vlog than like a couple of weirdly short ones and like try to pressure myself into filming more vlog updates. So just, I would assume buckle down for a decently long vlog here. Um, I don't have much to say because I'm currently not reading a physical book. I'm sure that will change today. I just have not picked the next one to pick up yet. Um, I have like my library books and it will probably be a library book and I say probably it will be a library book. I just have to like decide which one and right now deciding things is a little bit stressful so I've just been watching hours upon hours of Scooby-Doo instead and that's that's been enjoyable. I like this. This has been good life decisions here. Um, but I, I, I will choose a book to start later. I did start listening to a new audiobook, which is why I'm updating. I have things to say about that one. I'm not finished it yet, but I listened to it on my overnight shift last night and I listened to it for the full shift. So that was like, not the full shift, but like the full shift that I was allowed to be listening to things before the story opened. So that was like six and a half hours. Um, so I made a decent dent in that. It was, oh, what's it called? Rising Out of Hatred, The Awakening of a Former White Nationalist, I believe is the title, by Eli Saslow. Um, I, I had wrong expectations for this book. I want to like, I, I want to say that right off the bat is that I went into this book with just the wrong expectation because I don't tend to research my audiobooks very much. I, every couple of months, I'll go through the library page and I'll sit down and just like add books to my wish list, like add any audiobooks that look even vaguely interesting to my wish list so that then when I need one, I can go to my wish list and I have like 20 or 30 things and I can just like pick one that's available at that time instead of like trying to figure out a new audiobook like every week when I have my overnight shift and that works for me. But it also means that I tend to get, go into audiobooks with like no knowledge of it, which is kind of it, not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's like you pick up something that's fine and sometimes I go into this book thinking it's a memoir. Um, it's not. It is nonfiction, like, but it's not a memoir. It's about Derek Black, who is the son of the guy who runs Stormfront, I believe is what it's called. Um, I don't remember things very well when listening to the audiobook, but white supremacist online group. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're very well known. Apparently the son is very well known. I don't know too much about these people. So yeah, I didn't really know that much going in. I just assumed it was a memoir and the guy who wrote it was the guy who was the former white nationalist, which like, had I read anything about this book, I would have known that wasn't the case, which, you know, that's on me. I also just assumed, based on the title, that it was going to be about a guy who went from being a white nationalist to being, or white supremacist, I forget which one they used, to being anti-racist and like, like aggressively anti-racist, like a, um, activist. Um, I, I assumed it was going to be about someone who was now an anti-racist activist and I am only 85-ish percent through this book but at the point I am in the book the guy who was apparently the former white nationalist has really only downgraded from white supremacist to white nationalist and <laughs> he's still very racist so like I don't know how much is going to be changing in the last like little bit of the book so I've only got like an hour left to listen to out of, you know, like the seven or eight hour book, like there's, there's not super much to go. And I assume some of that is like credits and all. So I don't know, like he's not, he's, his views have improved, but like less racist than before is still very racist. So I don't really understand what's going on. And it's kind of like unpleasant to read because I was really expecting it to be about someone who would become an anti-racist activist after, you know, being a white nationalist. And I really assumed it was going to be like about the journey and about the mindset change and really like a deep dive 
into their beliefs and values but because it's not a memoir it almost feels like Derek Black I'm like 90% sure that's his name like he didn't want this book to be written like he didn't talk a lot about his beliefs like it doesn't feel like you get inside his head like you ever see what he's thinking like you get his actions and you get the situations and it's always just like you get his words that he said out loud but you don't get to deep dive in his head and unless I'm very much mistaken he was involved in the writing of this book like he didn't write it it's not from his perspective it's like third person you know like it's a biography basically but I don't know like without really deep diving into the mindset there's not a whole lot there except for just like this dude being racist for hours and hours and hours and it's just unpleasant and I thought it was gonna be like more useful than it is but it doesn't really I don't know like delve into like how he changed his mind because like he is in the process of like changing his mind in the book but you really only see it like from the outside you don't see like his mindset changing you don't see his views changing and like all the little ways and the emotions that are tied up in that because he feels like almost very separate from the book like it's very distant from him and I don't know like I'm not getting super much out of it it's just you know so far I've listened to like seven hours and it's just seven hours of a lot of racism and not a whole lot to really make it worthwhile for me I don't know um I'm gonna finish it I'm not gonna DNF it it is like kind of interesting just because like I don't know much detail wise about white supremacists like like specific groups and stuff because this does deal with a lot of specific groups and I mean like David Duke is in this and obviously I know who David Duke is but like I don't know like I didn't know much about Stormfront I never heard of the blacks before like it's it, it deals a lot with like I don't know how to describe it but it's not like white supremacy in general which I would know about it's very much about like these specific people their specific ideals what their goals are and I think that's interesting just because it's like new to me but I don't know the book on a whole I just it's not what I expected and had I known what it was going in I probably wouldn't have bothered reading it to be perfectly honest but I will finish it. I'll probably finish it soon. Like, I don't feel like waiting two weeks for my next overnight shift. So, yeah. I don't know, but I do... It's interesting enough for me to follow. I guess that's kind of the takeaway here, but uh, it's a lot of just... It's really racist. I mean, like, it, that's the point. Obviously, I'm not saying the book itself is racist, but it does do a lot of, like, victimizing of the white nationalist while he's still a white nationalist and it's that's like kind of uncomfortable and I don't know I'm not really a fan but yeah I do need to pick my physical book to read again we'll do that later today at some point and we'll probably update like tomorrow or something whenever I've started it and like can at least tell you in the vague what that book is about so you know um I think that's it for today it's the beginning of June June 2nd um I meant to start this yesterday and then I just didn't. <laughs> That's about where I am. We are now kind of into mid-June, which haven't updated the vlog since the first one, so there's that. Um, I do have bookish things to talk about because I have read things and whatever, but I don't feel like it. Today I have a fun package that I actually got a few days ago, I just haven't opened yet. Um, it's from Good Fair. Good Fair is a thrifting website. Um, they sell a lot of like bundles and stuff. Like you buy like, you know, 20 bucks worth of t-shirts. They'll send you four of them and they're just like random and they have books. <laughs> so I bought three books. I don't know what they are. It's just like three random books. Um, yeah, they could be anything. You can't request genre, you can't request anything it's just like three entirely random books so there could be just three bibles in here who knows <laughs> it's really fun like just like the excitement and anticipation but I'm also aware of what three random books means and I'm assuming these are probably going to be books that you see in the thrift store for five straight years that never go away because no one wants them <laughs> um, so that's what I'm expecting I'm just expecting disappointment but like fun new books. Um, 
I will be thrilled if there is one of these that I want to read and not just immediately unhaul because I'm kind of expecting that all of these are just gonna be like straight into the unhaul pile but we'll see we'll see um I haven't opened this yet so I have no idea what's in here they feel small like they feel like mass markets um but we'll see I'm hoping for one one that seems somewhat interesting that's that's all I want in the world <laughs> um but even if not it was still fun the possibility okay let's see what do we have in here oh interesting okay now these look interesting actually um okay let's start with this this is on top the Woman Who Married a Bear by John Straley. Um, in Alaska, an aged woman engages a local investigator to look into her son's murder. And there is a primal conspiracy to hide both the motive for the victim's murder and the true identity of the killer. Ooh, this seems like a real- okay. I was expecting, like, terrible 80s, like- <laughs> Tom Clancy stuff, you know, like, that's what I was, ooh, this seems interesting, um, yeah, okay, I'm already, like, this has already far exceeded my expectations, so, yeah, there's this, and then the second thing in here, Where the Heart Is by Billy Letts, who's in Oprah's book club, interesting, not always ideal, um, a 17-year-old who is pregnant, was heading for California with her boyfriend and now she's stranded at a Walmart in Oklahoma with no money. So she is living in the Walmart is what it appears. Interesting. So again, Where the Heart Is by Billy Letts. And um, The Bishop's Daughter by Wanda E. Brunstetter. This looks like historical fiction. This might be religious fiction, actually. It says general fiction romance, so maybe not, but it looks very, very religious. This might be too religious for me. I don't know. We'll see, I'll look more into this one because I don't mind religion in books. I just don't want a book that's like gonna convert me. Um, she's Amish, I assume. Apparently the author is super into Amish people or something. I don't know. This one actually has like a really long description on the back, so I'm not gonna bother to read all of that. So I'm actually quite pleased with this. This is far better than I was expecting. Um, two of the three I'm definitely going to keep and read. Um, these two. This one I want to look a little more into because sometimes religious books are a little bit more like the point is the religion and the faith-based stuff instead of just like the characters happen to be religious, so I'm gonna look and see what that one is like. But the other two, for sure, I'm keeping and reading. Um, probably wouldn't have picked up either of them on my own, but now that I have them, I'm pleased. So, um, far better than I was expecting. I'm actually kind of excited for these. I'd not heard of any of them before, and now this is like number three in a series. So, there's a solid chance this one's going away, but two out of three is not bad so i would highly recommend that if you want some random surprise books and if you're not super picky um because that was fun that was probably the most fun i had all day um yeah i have i'll link the information for good fair down below if you're interested because it's like it it focuses on like sustainability and like combating fast fashion and stuff like that so if you're interested definitely check that out because I'm not buying clothes from there because I do have like good thrift stores around me so like I don't need to. I can buy clothes sustainably that way but um yeah based on these books I'm, I'm, I'm quite quite pleased so yeah information down below if you're interested. Hello!
Okay. Come here. Hi. Hi. Come here. Oh. <laughs> Dilly, what are you doing? Hi. Okay, it's just me. It's just me. They're not coming, it's just me, Deli. Bit of a change of location here. Um, I'm at my parents' house, dog sitting. Where's the puppy? There's the puppy. Hi, puppy. Deli. 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 No, she doesn't care. Um, they're, they're on vacation. They're out camping or doing whatever it is they do. So I'm dog sitting and cat sitting, but I haven't actually found the cat yet. That'll be a project for later this evening, um, just for the evening. But I'm here. Um, wanted to do a bit of a bye. Wanted to do a bit of a reading update. Basically, I finished the racist book. What's that? Rising Out of Hate? I forget what it was called, but I finished that book. Um, it did get better. I want to say that. Like, I'm gonna give it three stars. It wasn't great. Like, there's definitely like things I had a problem with, like, two-thirds of the book just seemed like it was about him being racist. Like, I was expecting more of it to be about the change and, like, after the fact, and it really just seemed like two-thirds of the book was about him being a white nationalist. And I was like, oh yeah, he changed. Which, like, he did. Um, after my last update, I do want to be like, yeah, like, he became an anti-racist act activist and, like, he, he did seem to make the full change and it did seem sincere. So it's like, took a while to get there, took longer than I expected for it to get there, but you know, eventually did get there. Um, it also seemed kind of an issue that like, you never really got his perspective very much. Like, it seemed fine. Like, you got like, the external of what was going on, but it never seemed like it got very inside of his head, which was kind of what I wanted from a book like this, was just to like, be in his head you know <laughs> like that was kind of what i was expecting and we never really got that it was sort of like oh here's the things he said and here are the things he did and here's you know what's going on but it wasn't like here's what he's thinking about this it would be like oh well i don't even know it just i expected more inside his head i did think this was a memoir to be perfectly honest and that was you know my own bad like not blaming the book for that that was definitely on me but I don't know. I wouldn't really recommend it unless you just specifically like books about white supremacists who find the light. <laughs> I don't know. Like if you like reading books like that, then like sure this one's fine. Like there's nothing really wrong with it, but it also didn't do anything for me. And I have a couple other books about racism today that are in my um in my library wish, wish list, like audiobooks I plan to listen to. And it just kind of left me feeling like literally any of those would have been better than this. But it was still like, it was fine. It just didn't really do a whole lot. And then I did actually start making progress on the newlyweds. And by start making progress, I mean, I'm very nearly done. <laughs> I'm like 230 pa pages in or something. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm almost at the end. I really like it. It's definitely like exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's very just slow and introspective and just like dramatic things happen but the characters don't deal with them in a dramatic way they just kind of like exist and make like intelligent choices that are not like causing the most drama and excitement and it's just like very slow and I don't know I really really like it it's kind of just like exactly the kind of book I enjoy but definitely wouldn't recommend it unless you're like also into very slow books but it is just really interesting I love the characters I love the story I think it's fantastic it's probably gonna be four stars um it's not like my favorite thing ever but it's definitely just a very very good book that I'm enjoying so yeah interesting I don't I don't think it's own voices it doesn't seem to be owned voices, so that's always kind of eh, because the main character is Bangladeshi. She's a Bangladeshi woman who comes to America to marry a man, and it's just kind of about, like, their relationship, and, like, she wants to bring her parents over, and there are, like, cultural issues, and he's got some issues of his own, and she's got some family issues, and, like, 
it's just kind of about them dealing with stuff and it's called a love story which I feel like is kind of a stretch <laughs> but I do I really enjoy their relationship and the way their relationship is written and I enjoy her as a character I think she's like really well developed and just really interesting as a person and just it's a good book I really I'm really enjoying that and then after that since I'm dog sitting I brought two books just to actually like make myself read um the other that I brought was What We Lost by Zinzi Clemens which is one of the books of, that I got about a woman whose mother dies she's like a young woman she's like adult but not like adult adult I think I think she's like late 20s or something I don't know I'm just making stuff up at this point but this is what I'll be reading next so there might be an update on this later or tomorrow or something because I didn't bring my laptop and I didn't bring anything to do so I'm probably just going to be reading for the next several hours um that's fun but yeah I would like to like make progress on those because I've not been doing great with my reading this month we're like halfway through the month and I'm still I've only finished one physical book so I want to I want to work on that a little bit more and hopefully the puppy will be a good reading buddy she's back she's hanging out hi baby Deli. Oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean someone was coming home. She's so upset because I came, I came in earlier and <laughs> she thought I was bringing more of her favorite people and then it turned out to be just me. So she's been sulking for like the last hour. The poor little baby. I'm finally filming this much needed reading update. I finished, where is it? Which one? <laughs> I finished The Newlyweds by Nell Freudenberger. Um, this was good. Like, it was kind of exactly what I expected it to be, what I thought it was going to be, what I wanted it to be. It was really slow, really drawn out, really introspective, just like, about their situation. I gave it four stars. Like, it was just kind of like one of those books that completely drew me in and was just kind of like, comforting. Like, this is kind of just a comfort read for me. And very little happened in this book to be perfectly honest but in a good way and i i really really enjoyed it um the only thing i didn't like so much was i preferred this book when it was about the couple um george and what's her name amina um they get married and when they're in america together and you see their dynamic it's really interesting but at a point she goes back to bangladesh to be with her parents for a while um and the, a good chunk of the book is kind of set with her being away from George, like especially towards the end. And it was kind of like, I don't know, like it just, it was fine. But I was more drawn into the book when it was about them as a couple, as opposed to like it being about Amina on her own. But it was still really good. Um, yeah, so I enjoyed this. If you like those kind of like, very slow, very literary, kind of just like, this is a person in kind of a normal situation who has normal reactions to things. I would recommend this because I, I did really, really enjoy it. And after that, I think I mentioned, I was gonna start this, What We Lose by Zinzi Clemens. Um, I am decently into this, like halfway about. Uh, I, I really, really like it. It's not what I was expecting at all. I was expecting more of like, a narrative story about a woman whose mother dies and it's very much like snapshots little vignettes that are out of order and her mother dying is a major focus but also so is race and identity her mother was south african and she was born in america so she's kind of dealing with that and also race because she's black and it's there's a lot going on outside of just like the mother element so um it wasn't really what I expected it to be but not in a bad way like I really really like it it honestly reminds me a little bit of Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen because not in terms of like subject matter or anything but just the way it's told is kind of like these very short sections where it's like you'll get like a page maybe two that's just like describing this moment or this person or this thought and they're kind of like not cohesive but when you read them all together they kind of like form together to make this novel and it's really interesting it kind of like you put the story together on your own because you're just getting all these pieces like you're getting 
like I like to call them snapshots because it's like you're really getting like a snapshot of this moment and this whole book is like an album of those snapshots and it tells a story but it's not in a very typical like point A to point B to point C narrative sense and it's just it's really interesting so I would if you liked if you read Girl Interrupted and you like that aspect of it I would definitely recommend picking this up because it's just it's beautifully written and I really really enjoy it so far um so yeah that's that's what I've been doing I'll probably make more progress on this um it's just it is weird because like when you sit down to read it let me show an example like like this is what the section looks like you know and they're all like this where it's just like a page maybe two of each chapter and they're kind of like separate and it's it's really lovely and it's really like poetic like it's a very poetic novel um but yeah I, I do I am reading it I do enjoy it I do recommend it so if you're if you're interested in this kind of thing because I've never heard of it before but I think it's like fairly famous I just am unaware of what's going on in the world I also don't know when this is from and I also just found out the main character's name like three pages ago oh it's from 2017 this isn't very old which is weird like her mother called her Sandy and I was like that's an interesting nickname and then I looked in the front jacket and I was like oh no that's not a nickname that's just her name so my bad but I'm, I'm I'm really enjoying it just wanted to film a quick update for the vlog because I haven't in a minute um it's June 24th today which is a minute since I last did anything related to YouTube um really need to edit a video really need to read some really need to keep this vlog updated I'm still working on What We Lose by Zinzi Clemens. Have made perhaps minimal progress, not much, <laughs> since I last updated. Haven't been reading much. Don't have an audiobook going because I usually listen to audiobooks at work when I do my overnight shift and I got a new job. Um, same place. I still work at the grocery store, just like a different position within the grocery store that will hopefully be better and hopefully means... I won't have to work a random overnight shift every week or two. Um, but yeah, no, no audiobook because of that. And just learning to do an entirely new job that's in a vaguely supervisory position is kind of a lot right now. So I've kind of just been like collapsing after work and my hours changed. So now I work like during the day instead of at like waking up at four o'clock in the morning. But my, my body still would like to wake up at four o'clock in the morning even though I don't work until eight. So that's, it's an adjustment all around. Um, it'll be good, I think, in the long run. It's just right now, it's like, I'm still trying to do booktube things, but I, I literally just come home from work and just collapse on the sofa and eat sugar until I'm literally too tired to keep my eyes open <laughs> anymore. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good, I think will be good just right now it's kind of a lot booktube is i mean everything that are my hobbies and fun things have kind of just like fallen to the wayside a little bit but i do i really would like to finish this book up soon i'm off tomorrow tomorrow's my first day off since i started this job um it's been a couple days like today was day four um but this i would like to get this finished this weekend hopefully it's thursday and I'm off tomorrow and then I work Saturday and I don't even know about next week yet. I haven't gotten there. Um, would like to finish this and then hopefully start on one of my other library books. Maybe the sci-fi one because I'm reading kind of slower anyway right now. And that might be an interesting place to go. We'll see. We'll see. But I just kind of wanted to add an update to the vlog at least to explain why I'm not updating the vlog. It is July 7th, which means this vlog has gone on for kind of a little bit longer in terms of like time wise than I would have liked um but I've not been reading much not been vlogging much not been doing much of anything work is a lot but that's fine um uh, it's good I did start a new book um it's called the people who eat darkness or people who eat darkness I don't remember if there's a book. people who eat darkness it's a true crime book about Lucy Blackman and she she was murdered in July 2000. Um, she was working as a hostess in Japan. She's a British woman and she was killed by a serial rapist. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's very long though. It's just like, 
it feels like it kind of just like goes on forever and ever and ever which is like kind of fine but also kind of a lot and it was really interesting at the beginning when he was discussing like her and her disappearance like that was interesting but now he's into like the guy who killed her and like the backstory of him and the trial and kind of like everything that's going on around that and I'm just like bored and ready for it to be over but it has been interesting to listen to um have not made progress on anything else but I did film a video today for the first time and god knows how long so that's that's lovely and fun and hopefully that's a trend that will continue however slowly that continues um but yeah that's my food that I just microwaved so I should go do that and stop vlogging because I have nothing more to say anyway so this vlog has been kind of extended and not well updated um <laughs> I feel like every update for like the past two months has just been me saying I've not been reading, I don't have anything to say, I just wanted to say time has passed and that's kind of like the same here. Um, it's There have been a lot of changes the last few months. Um, I talked about getting the new job, I'm a manager now which is a lot and I'm the manager. I have a- I'm still working at the same place, I'm just a manager now in a different department so like I had to learn a whole department and sketch car <laughs> a whole department as well as all the management stuff so that was kind of a lot and it's still a lot and then like three weeks after I started both of my managers left like both the other managers left so I was kind of alone for a minute and that was a lot um but it's going well and I moved um hence me actually having light when I vlog now. I'm actually sitting in a window. Um, this is like, I have the massive window sills now that my cat loves. She loves the window, she loves the rug, so she's happy, but moving was also kind of a lot. And I've just had no energy, no energy for reading, no, no, no nothing. Um, I've not even like been watching shows. I've just been existing. Um, but I want to like start doing things again because work has started to even out a little bit like it's still work it's still like the worst <laughs> but um kind of getting more manageable now and I just I don't know like I haven't been reading at all um I did work an overnight the other night which I'm not supposed to do anymore because I kind of outrank all of them but I started an audiobook while doing that um The Devil in Sherlock Holmes by David Graham I sort of just have a running list of like vague audiobooks I've heard of or things that randomly looked good so that when I do need an audiobook I just have a list I can pull from. This was on the list. I don't think I'd actually like looked at what it was about because I think I just thought it was about like a specific murder case or something because I knew it was nonfiction, and it was just I liked the title and then I started looking at the book and it's a journalism book. It's a collection of David Grant's pieces, some of his pieces that all deal with like crime. He's kind of saying he's an investigative journalist might be a bit heavy, um, but they're all like very long narrative pieces where he like really delves into a story. Like not always like an intense investigation, but an interesting story. And I don't know, I really liked it. I mean, like it so far. I'm like a couple essays in, essays, articles. Uh -uh. But yeah, I'm reading that, listening to that, and it's really interesting. And that's been it. Like, I've been trying to watch Law and Order to catch up on, like, SVU as well as Organized Crime. And I've been, like, two episodes a week if I'm lucky. <laughs> Which, like, it's bad when you don't even have the energy to watch generic cop shows. But, um, yeah, so I have light when I film now because I can literally just sit in the windowsill. Um, with my cat, there would be room for both of us to sit up here because, like, my full body is in this windowsill. It's kind of insane, but also, like, nice. And I have a reading chair now, which I will show y'all probably in a different vlog because I don't feel like moving to a different room. Um, but it's, it's nice here. Um, I don't know how long. I'll be here because there are some issues but like I do I do like it here and my cat likes it here so that's all good and this is probably closing out the vlog but um I do plan to like make an effort to get reading again and like I have the library books that are still sitting there that I haven't gotten to like three and a half of them and it's like they all seem interesting to me and they're all like I want to read that like 
I picked them out because they sounded really interesting and it's just like, don't know, haven't gotten to them yet, haven't been reading. But like if I make an effort, I feel like I'll be able to get into reading a little bit and then hopefully have the time and energy to not only edit a YouTube video, which I've been doing on occasion, but actually like respond to comments because I don't think I've responded to many comments at all in just months and months and months. And I feel bad because like I do really appreciate comments. It's just emotionally draining mentally draining I don't know one of the two but my plan is to make more of an effort and maybe have a little bit more energy for things in the coming coming months we shall hope